Welcome to the End Times Research Ministry. This is Frank DeMora, uh, giving you the connection between Bible prophecy and current events. And today is August the 13th, 2013. A lot is going on. So let me go right over there. I thank you for all the people from New York and all these people around the globe that are punching into my website, getting this information, whether it be on my Facebook uh, page that you can see right down here. Many are going to the Facebook, uh, some are coming to my YouTubes, a lot of them, about 5,000 I believe. And then uh, the End Times Research Ministry here at my website that you can get right by going to this link right here. And so I want to cover some information that I gave to you a few days ago. I gave a warning about watching these earthquakes, these big earthquakes that were coming. I gave the warning. I normally don't give warnings unless I really feel this. Uh, I can't even explain it. All I know is I have this compulsion to tell you that what I believe that the Lord wants me to tell you when I say it, and obviously it better happen. So a few days ago, uh, three days ago, I said that I want you to pay attention this week because we're going to see huge earthquakes, big earthquakes. They're going to be coming. And I got a video here for you. I'll play that video. But first of all, I want to give thanks to Marcy and uh, McDowell. She commented. She was one of the Facebook uh, people that came to my Facebook and she made a comment saying you said to watch for big quakes this week and here they are and I want to thank you for coming it's always good to hear from people I know that people are reading it and uh, understanding what I'm trying to show them so let me just point out I want to go over to my my site because I posted this yesterday it was up there we had the red flag with the earthquakes I give you all the scriptures that it talks about it but in my, even in here, on my mark here, I said the one hour, uh, one hour, one minute and 39 second mark. This is where I start talking about watch for these quakes that are going to be coming this week. So if you want to, here's that video. Just go all the way over. You can scroll all the way over to the end. You'll see the time. Let me just pull it right up over here. Yeah. Their future are more what's going to happen with and I'll just play for it. So listen to what I'm saying. The peace talks. Uh, now that Kerry is going back uh, this week, watch more disasters in the United States. Look for massive earthquakes. I'm not sure if the earthquakes are going to hit the United States, but keep your eyes on uh, some big earthquakes that are coming. The, the Lord promised. In uh, Luke 21, chapter 21, uh, he talked about watching these great earthquakes. And we know that they're on the way, so keep on the watch for those as well. So this is Frank DeMora saying, have a good weekend. All right, so there you go. At least you'll know where I said it. So if somebody wanted to know, you could just point it out. I give you the, the information right there. I give you the, the quotes of where you start. So the flag was up, and look what's happened. We've had a 6.0. This one hit in uh, Tonga. That, now, this was on August 1st. And the reason why I put this on here is because I, I keep track of all the earthquakes. But when I gave that uh, warning, you'll see it here, the 6.0, 6.0, 6.2. And then the ones down here are after that warning as well. But here we have this one hit Indonesia. This one hit New Zealand. And you'll be able to uh, look all this information up. But you can get all of this information in my book by clicking on the link at my website. Here's a 6.2 that hit Peru. And then look at this. This happened uh, August the 12th, yesterday as well. China, 6.1. We had a moderate earthquake that hit uh, in Bulgaria. I believe that one was a 3.2. But I'm just giving you this information. But then the USGS, as you can see here, now this is a huge earthquake, a 6.7 magnitude earthquake. And this hit uh, uh, in Colombia. So let me just go over there for a second.
Now, as you notice in the article, it says at magnitude 6.5, but down here it said the quake struck at 10.43 a.m. local time, and this is the, the British time who was reporting this, but it talks about the 6.7. The U.S. Geological Survey put the intensity of the quake at a higher magnitude at 6.7 and said that it happened in a shallower depth at 10 kilometers. So this was six miles down. So there you go. We had a rash of earthquakes, just like I warned. And you can't go wrong if you listen to the, to the Holy Spirit, if, if, you're, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit. And if you know His Word, you know that His Word is always going to come true. There's no question about that. The Scripture's there. We're in the last days. He told us we were going to have earthquakes and the great earthquakes. And here we go. We're, we're seeing them, uh, a lot of these quakes, 6.7, the biggest, over the last uh, four days. So definitely coming into play. Now, the last one I wanted to report was another mild one. I told you I wasn't sure if they were going to hit in the United States or not. But this one was hitting in an area where they normally don't hit. August 13th, this one was today, just like the last earthquake that we saw here, the 6.7. And this quake was a 3.3 earthquake that has been reported in West Tennessee. And the agency's website says that the event occurred around 4.45 p.m. And this is Monday, about five miles west of Opium. So, hey, they're happening. I warned it. Now, I've been warning that, please, if you come to my website, I'm going to be reporting about the fish, the birds, and the animals that are dying off. I told you that they, these occurrences are happening almost every day now. And today is no exception. You'll see the verse right here. Rosanna talks about the birds, the fish, and the animals dying. And there was three more reports to, uh, that were not logged into my book since the last time that I gave it to you. And I wanted to make sure that you saw this information. It all has to do with fish. On the 8th of August, the 10th of August, and the 10th of August, you'll see one affected in Italy, the other one in Poland, and another one in Colombia. This one, millions of dead fish wash up across. And uh, let me just plug in this one. Now, most of these, you'll find that when you go to my website, you click the link, uh, they have to uh, translate the language because a lot of these incidents are taking place in areas outside the United States. So let's let her wait. And uh, all right, so here you go. It says millions of dead fish appear appear on the beaches of Tolu. So look at take a look at this picture here. And this is only one of one of many pictures, I suppose. But the uh, this is a fact of life. Almost every single day, whether it be the temperature that is increasing, it's causing oxygen to be depleted. Whether it's the intensity of the heat that's taking oxygen out of the water, contamination, whatever it is, we know uh, by the reports that it's happening on a frequent basis. Now let me go into the peace and safety. And if you've been with me for any amount of time, let me just say, please bear with me. This is for the new people. I'm getting new people all the time. And I want to make sure they understand what's so important about Israel and this talk for peace and safety. Jesus talked to Paul and he told him in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 and 4, he says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Now keep in mind, in Mark 13, 8, I've said this many, many times, Mark 13, 8, Jesus compares uh, the last days to birth pains. And we see it again here. Travail upon a woman with child. So in other words, it's going to get bad. It's going to get a little bit better. The pains will go away. Then the next round is going to get worse until the baby's born. This is how the peace talks have been going. I've been warning people, showing people constantly and I've said many, many times, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to give you the links here. And then when you read those links, these are to my old site or to my post that I put up telling you, for example, I'm going to just pull one up for you. 
And then the other two, you, when you read those, they're similar, they're a little bit different, but they are similar. But I wanna show you what I was talking about because over the years I've been warning you about the peace process breaking down, being installed, and not going anywhere. No peace, and why? And as you can see here from my statement, this was this article that I put up was actually a 2010, but I refer back to the 2009, one that I gave you in 2009. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, let me tell you what you can expect for these new round of peace talks. They will fail, all right? And they did fail in 2009, just like they did in 10, 11, 12, and now 13. It says, not just because Israel won't stop building, but because Israel is going to refuse to hand over East Jerusalem. So all the way back in 2009, East Jerusalem was the problem. Just like Zechariah, you'll see it here, warned that Jerusalem was going to be a major problem in the last days. And the construction, the Jews are maintaining uh, their quest on building in Israel, in East Jerusalem, in different parts of Israel. And this was a uh, a sticker to the peace talks and nothing has changed back then I told you it was going to fail and in these other reports that I put up at my site you'll see uh, as I said there's a little bit of difference in there but I walk I talk you about the process failing about East Jerusalem ownership of East Jerusalem and construction in the borders all of those are major obstacles and it's causing it to fail Nothing has changed. Here we are in 2013, and we see that Jerusalem has become the focal point, ownership, and it's caused many of the world leaders to break off with Israel. We saw it happen in Egypt. We saw it happen in Turkey. We saw it happen now with the, the EU, the revived Roman Empire, if you will, and the United States is on the bandwagon. Barack Obama, I believe, was set in place to, no doubt, He's helping fulfill the Zechariah prophecy by stabbing Israel in the back. He's definitely not their friends as he tries to divide up the land and sets the curse on America. We need to be praying for Barack Obama that that agenda changes. Now, let me just show you. When you're talking about stabbing Israel in the back and the concerns, nothing has really changed. Let me go over to this article because there's a video there and it's some information I want to share with you. I'm Beth, and I'm Michelle, and we own the Paper Cottage. It's a stationery and gift store. Anything we purchase for the All right, now what we have here is there's a meeting. They're, they're talking about this uh, dinner, if you will, at the, the White House. And what they're talking about is they're getting together this dinner that's going to be uh, talking about the peace process because the peace process is going to go into effect at least again. John Kerry goes to Israel tomorrow, Wednesday, All right? Now, a last about three or four days ago, I warned what was going to happen. And I showed you, for example, actually it was on July 30th, I made a video about this, and I said, look, on July 30th, the announcement was Kerry was going to go in the next two weeks. So back to Israel, and he was going to start up these stalled peace talks, at least make the attempt. And I said, when that announcement went forth, watch the United States, watch what's going to happen. And the next day, the middle of the United States of America, Kansas, you'll see that there was a huge, huge sinkhole over 200 feet wide. And it's still expanding. And it's 90, it was 90 feet. It may even be deeper now. The day after he made that announcement, and as when he made that announcement, if you go to my website and you read my book, you'll see 
that there was major, major flooding in 16 states in the United States. They had rain that came down, almost two feet of rain in some places. Massive flooding damage un like you cannot believe. All right, so all of these things are destructive. Anybody who tries to divide up Israel, the curse falls on them. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, read it. You'll be blessed if you bless Israel. You'll be cursed if you curse Israel. But this meeting talks about this uh, uh, coming together, and they're going to be talking about it. Now, you'll notice that there's going to be a little confrontation because this lady cannot give any information whatsoever. She skirts around the issue. She's great at dodging a question because there's nothing good that comes from the peace process. All of these years, you're going to see that through this video. All right, so let's watch the video and then we'll read down here. I'm in front of me, uh, literally afternoon today. Okay. Dinner tonight, mm -hmm. is that state or at his house? Is that the state department? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an iftar dinner. Is it an iftar dinner or not a regular dinner? There, there will be food served at an iftar dinner, uh -huh. yes. Lovely. Um, now, beyond logistics, again, when he uh, announced or appointed uh, Ambassador Indic to this uh, post, uh, the Secretary said that um, the Ambassador knows what has worked and what hasn't worked mm -hmm. in the past. I'm wondering if you could elaborate a little bit what has worked in the past. Well, Matt, I don't, I'm not going to elaborate on that for you. I'm not a historian here. Well, what um, did he mean? The, the ambassador knows what has worked and what hasn't worked. Because I, I think, I think any, if you look at what has worked and what hasn't worked in the past, everything hasn't worked. So are you asking me why this is I'm different? I'm asking you, one, why it's different, but I'm also asking you, what does he mean when he says that Ambassador Indic knows what has worked? Well, he knows that uh, Ambassador Indic has uh, been involved and engaged uh, in this process in the past. Uh, he has respect from both parties. Uh, that was a key uh, priority for the Secretary in uh, making this appointment, somebody who could uh, run the process on a day-to-day -day basis. The Secretary knows he can't do this on his own. Uh, so certainly, I'm, I'm certain there are many lessons that have been learned from the past, and, uh, but I don't want to speak for... Uh, how he will how he will uh, use those moving forward. Okay, but you can't specify then what has worked, what Ambassador Indic knows has has worked in the past. I think uh, there's lots of things, Matt. Can you point to a single? Thing? I'm just curious. I'm really not trying to be a jerk about this. I, I just want to know what example can you point to as being something that has worked in the past? I'm not going to read out for you their discussions of what lessons they've learned from the past and how they'll apply them. The moving lessons forward. learned from past failures. Is that what you mean? Well, Matt, if, if it had worked in the past, we wouldn't be uh, okay. pursuing this process right, right. now. And then all right, so she skirted around the issue. Obviously, she can't do anything. She can't say anything because no good has come from it. And they've been trying to do this for a very long time, and nothing has worked. I've been pointing this out ever since I opened my website, since 2007. And I've been talking about this since 1977. Now, that's a very, very long time. And there is no reason when you read the scriptures and when he says that sudden destruction is coming when they're calling peace and safety you know that no nothing good can come of it so going back and forth all they're doing is hashing over the same exact things the borders ownership of east jerusalem and construction now look at this it says the state department on monday criticized israel well, of course barack obama has done nothing but criticize israel since he's been in the in the in the presidency it says for approving new settlements on disputed lands now the disputed lands this is land that israel owns they were attacked by the arabs Israel was at peace with themselves they were attacked they defended their country they took the land and they're saying that this is disputed land. It's not disputed land. Not at all. It says on the eve of the resuming a long stalled peace talk. So all of this is happening on the day before Israel is supposed to receive John Kerry to, to get these stalled peace talks. Good luck. Now the spokeswoman Mary Hoff 
or Hearth said that the administration had shared its serious concerns with the Israeli government following Sunday's announcements of almost 1,200 new settlement homes. There you go. Remember I said in 2009? It's the same thing in 2013. Israel didn't stop construction. They're advancing their construction. And I have other articles to show you as well, besides this one. But this is the night before, so you see the antagonism between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And believe me, I've said it a million times, uh, maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand, that when the Palestinians and the Arabs realize that nothing is going to happen with the peace process and they, they can't get what they want, the borders, the divide up the land in East Jerusalem, they're going to attack Israel. Israel and the Palestinian negotiators are set to resume talks in Jerusalem on Wednesday after the primary meeting hosted by the Secretary of State John Kerry uh, in Washington late last month. And these announcements do come at the particularly sensitive time, and we have our serious concerns about the recent announcement known to the government of Israel. Nahar said, we do not expect or accept the legitimacy of continued settlement activity. Like, give me a break. I mean, Israel can do whatever they want. It's their land. If they want to build, they build. But this, I believe, is one of the things that may launch that Psalm 83 war. So let's go back. All right, so... You know, there's another article here that shows Obama's a stabbing. He's saying that he's their friends. But why would your friend want to split your nation? Give it to your enemies who continually wants to destroy you, to take land away from you. And we see all kinds of articles that talk about the peace process. It's collapsing, like I've been warning. Let me go to another one for you. This is the Daily Star. Now keep in mind, Israel is ahead of us, all right? So even though today is the 13th, it's already the 14th there. So Pal the Palestine in Israel, <clears throat> excuse me, peace talks face collapse. Israel's moving forward with the plan to build nearly 900 new settlement housing units east in East Jerusalem. Again, the contention area, the contended area, if you will. An office official said Saturday in a move that angered Palestinians the day before the sides were to hold Mideast peace talks for the first time in nearly five years. The Israeli announcement threatened to poison the atmosphere ahead of Wednesday's talks, which come after months of mediation by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. In an initial gesture ahead of the talks, Israel was set to release 26 Palestinian prisoners late Tuesday. The last round of ostensive talks collapsed in late 2008 and negotiations have remained stalled mainly over the issue of the, here we go, the Israeli con settlement construction on territories claimed by the Palestinian in their future state. In other words, don't build in East Jerusalem. Don't build on any place where Israel took that land in 1967. Now the Palestinians say the settlements, now home to more than 500,000 Israelis, is making it increasingly difficult to carve out their state. And that continued Israeli construction is a sign of bad faith. So nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all. Right? The Palestinians have refused to resume negotiations with Israel unless Israel halted its settlement construction and demand that Israel has refused. So good luck uh, with this peace process. And we know there's going to be destruction when they're calling for it. You're talking about the plans for 900 housing units and Gelo coming to addition to an earlier announcement of some 1,200 in the West Bank. So you got Israel building in two different places and it's really ticked off the Palestinians, it's ticked off the Arabs. And again, 
just like I said in 2009 all the way to 2013, watch the Middle East because it is a powder keg ready to go off. Now as I scroll down here, let me reduce this a little bit. So again, you can take a look, watch my warnings. There's three of them there, different states. And I talk about Jerusalem, Zechariah, that prophecy, burdensome stone. It's all coming to pass. And it, because if you believe with the Lord and you see it, there's no doubt about it, you'll see that the nations are coming against uh, Israel, Obama, especially Obama right now. And uh, there's a lot more. Now, like I said, the PLO, they want the land. They're going to do whatever they want uh, eventually to try or at least think that they're going to be able to get it back. And that's joining in this confederacy that God talks about in Psalm 83. And the Palestinians didn't stop at just East Jerusalem and that Temple Mount area where the Dome of the Rock is, where the third most holy site is. Uh, and this is where the, the first and the second temple were on that Dome of the, or next to the Dome of the Rock or right on that area, excuse me. Uh, but this is the, the most holy site for the Jews. So now what? When they're talking peace, or at least trying to come together to try talking peace, here you have the Palestinians take another step to irritate Israel. Let me show you. I'll go to this article. You'll see what I'm talking about. Palestinian Authority denies Jewish right to the Western Wall. I mean, they're keeping them from going to the, the Dome of the Rock area where the Jews can't pray there. Their own government is stopping them from going there because of all the conflict between the Jews and the Arabs. And now, look what's going on. Abbas is trying to do... This is right before the stalled peace talks is supposed to sit down and they're supposed to get going. Let me get rid of this. says, in what is being described as yet another example of the Palestinian Authority PA denial of the Jewish connection to Jerusalem and the very legitimacy of the state of Israel, the President Guard of Palestinian Authority Chairman Hamad Abbas has claimed the Western Wall as an Arab and Islamic site. This just before John Kerry was supposed to come. And do you think there's any way that Benjamin Netanyahu, he's not even going to give, get rid of uh, or give away East Jerusalem, that Temple Mount area. Do you think he's going to give away the Western Wall? Not, not in your life. And this has come from in this media watch. It says, let me get rid of this again. I don't know why this keeps coming up. says in the NGO which monitors incitement anti-Semitism and anti-Israel propaganda of the Palestinian Arab TV has revealed that last week a picture of the Western Wall was posted onto the PA Presidential Guard's official Facebook page with the PA flag superimposed on it along with the words the Allah Baraka Wall Public relations and information, the Presidential Guard, Palestinian youth know their rights. The Western Wall is a relic of the retaining wall of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, which was destroyed by the Imperial Rome in 770 CE. For nearly 2,000 years, Jew Jews were prevented from worshiping on the Temple Mount, Judaism's holiest site, and instead prayed at the wall, which has since become a holy site on its own right, at which millions of Jews congregate prayer each year. Ongoing restrictions of the Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount mean that the wall is still the primary place for the Jewish worship in Israel. So there you have, believe me, what you're seeing here are instruments of war. 
These are the things that are, are butting heads that are going to cause eventually the Psalm 83 war. Now, I'm not going to apologize for keep saying watch uh, these signs for, because they're leading to the Psalm 83 war because they're very, very important signs. When you come against Israel, you, you tell Israel you're going to separate them, you're going to take East Jerusalem, you're going to take the wall, and then they're going to kill you and, and uh, wipe you out and destroy you. It becomes... Uh, evident that prophecy is about to be fulfilled. So I need to go back to my site for a second. Now, here's another article. It's a short article, so I'm not even going to bother going there. But the reason why I put it up there is because the Hamas is part of the Psalm 83 group that's going to be you know, coming down with the Palestinians and the Syrians and Egypt and uh, all those other people that are named in the Psalm 83 war. But the leader says that uh, the peace is futile. And so what I was telling you about the peace process, sudden destruction, it's just more, it reinforces what the Lord had spoken to Paul about, the sudden destruction. And Hamas is bent on uh, destroying the nation of Israel. So now let's turn to Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2. Now this is a prophecy dealing with Egypt. Egypt is another one of the nations in the Psalm 83. There's going to be a lot going on in Egypt, and eventually uh, all of these problems are going to circumvent and come into one bowl, mixing bowl, and the outcome of that mixing bowl is going to be, if you will, compare it to baking, it's going to be, uh, uh, baking towards the destruction of Israel. They're going to try to come together uh, as a confederacy, as the prophecy says, to destroy Israel. But in the meantime, Isaiah shows us that the Egyptians are going to be fighting against themselves. They are doing that. And when you look at this site with the news that came out recently, you'll see that this is the 14th. Uh, there were 11 injured in clashes between the pro-anti-Marcy protesters. It's going on right now. This is in our face scripture. There's no doubt about it. You could read the article. It's not that long. It just talks about the protests that are going on. And you can see that their people have been shot by the government. They're warning them to get out of there. We're li likely to see some other deaths as a result of this, but this is a product of what the Lord told us to watch for. And keep in mind, it's happening when everything else is taking place at the same time, right? So peace and safety, the talks of peace and safety, the what's going on in Egypt, what's going on in Syria, what's going on, uh, if you will, <clears throat> with the, uh, the Palestinians, all of these things. They're in prophecy. Their names are in prophecy. You see the, the Palestinians, the Phoenicians, Syria, they're fighting against themselves. Look at Egypt. They're fighting against themselves. Man, oh man, I, if you can't see it, I don't know what it would take for you to see it. Now, when Egypt gets involved with the rest of these nations, and it, I believe that's going to happen soon. It could happen in 2013 if things keep going the way it's going. But when Psalm 83 war goes and Israel is not defeated, then there's one war left, the Ezekiel 38 war. And Iran is a major player in there. And the reason why I'm telling it is because I wanted to point something out to you. Very, very important. Because this is what the Lord told us to be looking for. In Ezekiel 39.2, we're warned that when you take a look at all of these armies, there's no doubt there's going to be probably two, three, four million Islamic men that would be coming against Israel thinking that they're going to crush Israel. But according to the word of God, it tells us that, uh, well, let's read it. It says, And I will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the northern, from the north parts. In other words, the attack will be coming from the north Israel uh, is in the say in the middle and directly north is Moscow, Magog, Gog. All right. Then you have Turkey and you have all these other countries that are going to be coming. And then there's other countries around Israel that will be attacking. You'll see they're coming from Africa, Morocco, or these African nations, Tunisia, Algeria, and uh, Morocco, and so forth. 
but uh, there's only going to be one sixth that will be able to live through this war. Five sixths of everybody who goes into that war is going to be killed. So if you're in this army, uh, please do not try to take out Israel because you're not going to be fighting against Israel. You're going to be fighting against God, Jehovah God. And the outcome is not going to be good. You're not going to win. Israel's not going to be defeated. So why am I giving you that information specifically about Iran? Take a look at this. Because these are the words that our Lord told us that you were going to see in the last days. And obviously, if you've been watching the news, you'll know that we don't have to wait anymore. We see these words in the news. Look at this. Iran's supreme leader promises in a newly released audio tape the destruction of Israel and the Palestinians return to that land. Fars News Agency. An outlet run by the Revolutionary Guards last week posted an auto tape. And if you click this link, I'm not going to hit it because it'll take me over there. But if you could read Arabic, it, it'll uh, give you what he said in Arabic. Of the ex experts of the Hayatotal al Khamenei's speech to the Palestinians officials and others with the title Palestine will surely become free. And the auto tape, which is partly in Arabic, Kahomeni, gives blessings to those who fight against Israel and says, Peace be unto the children of our nation. Peace be upon the brave jihadists and the Palestinian and Lebanese resistance, all of which are named in Psalm 83, by the way. And today the Islamic world and the world, the whole world, are witnesses to great revelations that show change in their international affairs. The Ayatollah promises a restructure in the Middle East. Palestine will be free. Have no doubt in this. Palestinians will return there and there will be a Palestinian government and that is based on the truth revealed by God. Now let me give you this. If, and I said this before, but if you are Muslim, go back to the 1948 war. Who won that war against Israel? All the Muslims coming against Israel. Who won that war? Israel. Israel didn't even have an army and they won the war. Who won the 1967 war? When Israel's outnumbered 100 to 1. Israel. Who won the 1973 war? Was it the Muslims or Israel? It was Israel. Now, this tell, does this tell you something about the God of Israel? Now, what do you think is going to happen in the Psalm 83 war when God tells us specifically who's going to fight against Israel and who's going to win? Who do you think is going to win that war? I'll tell you who's going to win. The same people who won the past three wars. In every war, Israel is going to win that war. And that should say something about who is the true God. Obviously, it should tell you that because if you have a tiny nation the size of Connecticut or New Jersey who's destroying these massive countries of peoples coming against them, then surely God is with them. And it's just no difference as Moses opening up the water and allowing the Jews to cross from Egypt safely. That was their God. He did it to the Egyptians. And God is going to do this again. He's not going to open up the waters, but he's definitely going to come to the aid and destroy five six of the armies who come against him saying that we're going to destroy Israel. That's what God said that they were going to be saying, and that's exactly what they're saying, and that's exactly the direction this world is heading. We're going to see Bible prophecy, the word of the Lord, fulfilled. There is no question about it. If the Holy Spirit spoke to you today about these events, listen to them and run to them. If the Lord is showing you by His Holy Spirit that His Word is true, you would be a fool not to embrace the Messiah, Jesus Christ, because He is coming for us. And I want to make sure that when He comes, you're one of the children that He's coming for, not one of the enemy. Not, you don't want to be a Cain. That's for sure. 
You want to be a David who is after God's own heart, a man after God's own heart. And so I'm praying that you would give your life over to the Lord. And no matter where you are, whatever you've done, it can be forgiven. I don't care what religion you are in. If you receive Christ, he's going to embrace you. He's going to take you. He's going to secure you. Your name will be in the book of life. And so if the Lord has spoken to you, I put something up here, a prayer that you can say with your own name. And the Lord will reveal himself to you and you will be saved. And why not today? Why not start your walk with Jesus today? What if you were to come back tonight and you did not repent? You need to repent. We all need to repent. None of us are perfect. God bless you all. And I'm praying that I would see so many of you in heaven.